I know that under the present circumstances of fighting in the south and destroying part of Gaza and trying to eradicate the uh, Hamas because of its intransigence and the fact that it, it represents the most extreme fundamentalist religious uh, bloody attitude towards the Western values and towards the existence of the State of Israel. It's very hard to talk about a political solution, but it is incumbent upon us to think about the next stage. We have to destroy the, the military power of Hamas. We need to do it. There is no way that we can live with Hamas developing its military powers again to what it was in October of 2023. But after we destroy the military power of Hamas, what then? We have to negotiate with the Palestinians and the only possible way to move forward towards a peace understanding and an agreement between us and the Palestinians is a two-state solution. If Israel will fail to recognize this, will remain in this very difficult turmoil for years to come with a growing uh, uh, disappointment of the international community and the friends of the state of Israel, and we may lose. If we will have the courage to do it, then there is a chance for a different life for the people of Israel. Now, what does it require? It requires from us as well as from them. Actually, this is the ultimate demand from every great leader, for everyone that wants to leave an imprint on history, is the ability to be, to be able to do something which is in complete contradiction to everything that you have been preaching for and fighting for and defending throughout your life if this is the right thing to do at this time and for the future, even though it's opposite to everything that you believed in in the past. I have an example from my own country, Menachem Begin, who advocated all his life that Israel has to be great, that we have to incorporate the West Bank into the State of Israel as part of the State of Israel, that we have to incorporate Sinai and so on. And yet, when he was Prime Minister, he did quite the opposite. He pulled out completely from Sinai, even didn't hold one centimeter of Sinai. He gave it up. Why? Because he thought that peace with Egypt is more important than the commitments that he made in the past. And this was a great historical leadership. I can bring an example from South Africa. The guy that was part of the apartheid, uh, the clerk, as president of South Africa, changed entirely and wrote peace and not a bloody peace and not a violent peace but a relatively relatively a moderate peace between blacks and whites in South Africa which was absolutely an historical achievement this is what needs is required now from both the leaders of the Palestinians and the leaders, the Palestinian Authority, not the Hamas. Hamas and the Jihad are all terrorist organizations that have to be removed in order to allow the more moderate forces to join uh, together in an attempt to establish a peace based on compromise. On compromise of maybe of assets which are enormously sensitive and important, certainly for us, because we have to pull out from territories. And that will require for any Israeli leader to do something that is against the tide that has characterized Israeli politics for generations. But this is, this is leadership, and this is history, and this is future, and this is hope, and that's what we have to do.